Welcome to Sadie's Kitchen, where we are going to be making some of my most treasured recipes that I have collected throughout the years and that I have been cooking. And so today we are going to make one of my favorite all-time recipes, and you'll understand what I mean by all-time in just a minute. But this is a broccoli and chicken braid, and it's one of those recipes that everybody loves. I take it to all the potlucks and any kind of parties or entertainment and it's always the first one to leave off of the table so i know that you're going to enjoy making this and taking it and sharing it with some of your guests too so let's talk about the ingredients that we're going to uh, place in um, our recipe we have some chicken here that i have already chopped uh, up and then we have some broccoli we have um, cheddar cheese, and I use sharp cheddar cheese because it always gives a recipe a better taste. We have some mayonnaise and uh, some uh, chopped red bell pepper. We have two garlics here. One garlic is a fresh garlic, and then I have powdered garlic. Uh, I love garlic, as you can tell. And then we have some uh, dried dill and some sea salt that I'm gonna be using here. Some, uh, and then we have nuts. Uh, some slivered almonds, and those are optional if you want to use or not. I really haven't used these, but they were in my recipe, and but I'm gonna try to use them today just to see what it's gonna look like. So, we're going to get started here. We have everything out um, here already ready to mix together, but don't try to write anything down because I am going to place the recipe in the comments section. So, we'll start off with our main star of the show, which is chicken. And I'll tell you what I did. Um, this is some leftover chicken that I had for from my rotisserie chicken. And so if you want to use that, if you want to make your own chicken, you can. But um, what's the need in doing that when you have some leftover chicken? I just happen to have chicken breast, but if you want to use chicken thighs or whatever else, you can. So we have some broccoli here that I blanched before we got started. And I'm gonna put all of that in there, kind of mix it up a little bit. And we're going to add our cheddar cheese. I love this recipe. And let's go with our red bell pepper next. Diced garlic. It's actually really minced garlic that I ran through my garlic press. Then we have some dried garlic. And we're we'll at our deal. A little bit of salt. And we'll hold off on those nuts. So I just kind of mix this up as a dry ingredient first before I add my mayonnaise. I don't want to get that mayonnaise in there first. I just put it in last. So here we go. I've used some light mayonnaise, but you can use regular if you'd like. Mix that up really good. I hope you can see that. I said the chicken was the star of the show, but honestly, the star of the show is what I spent a lot of time on fermenting some uh, hot peppers from my garden. They fermented for about, oh, I guess maybe three months. And we're gonna add a little bit of dash of this to give it a kick, okay? And I'm not gonna measure that. I'm just gonna sprinkle it in here. Put this back over so you can see it and get it mixed really well. This may look a little complicated, but it's really not. I mean, this putting this 
this mixed together is really easy, but you may think it's a little complicated when we start putting the pastry dough out, but it'll be just fine. What I'm going to do is move some of these things out of the way so I can spray it my pizza stone out so you can see what we got going on here. I want to share this with you. When I said this was my one of my uh, favorite dishes, this is a pizza stone that I've been using for the last 25, 30 years. And you can see the imprint of what I've been making on it, which is the broccoli and cheese braid. So I've made a bunch of them. Now, what you can do is use a cookie sheet too. Uh, you really don't have to have a pizza stone, but every woman needs a pizza stone. As a matter of fact, every woman needs two. Now, I've seen this broccoli braid. Some people will shape it in a circle which is really pretty. And then they'll put maybe some little, um, you know, some finger things in the middle of the braid. So if you wanna do that, that's fine too. But we're gonna use my old standby today. So what you wanna do is, um, because the pastry dough uh, is very forgiving, it's crescent pastry dough, it's very forgiving, but you want to leave it in the refrigerator until right before you get ready to use it. So we're going to take it out now. And what I'm going to do is add a little bit of olive oil to my pizza stone. Just so it'll remove off. just so it will remove off easily. So you don't have to put a whole lot. So I am gonna start, I have two um, crescent roll eight ounce containers and we are going to use both of them. So what I'll do is stretch that right here and it may go over a little bit and that's fine too. Um, to make this a little bit better, sometimes I sprinkle maybe a little flour on it so it can work better. Then we've got another one here. We're going to overlap it right here. Bring that down. Okay, now you can either do this with your less fingers. I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my hand. And I have here what's called a dough roller. And so uh, we're going to use this to, to roll this out just so we can cover up those holes in the crescent roll. Now, I want to cover this um, pizza stone completely. knife and kind of get that extra off there going around. I love crescent rose dough because you can do so many things with it. Like magic. No, I don't make my own dough. <laughs> why? But why should I? When you can just go to the grocery store and buy it. So, all right, there we go. Now, what we're going to do is you saw the little imprint on my pizza stone of where I've made previous um, broccoli braids. We're gonna take this mixture right now and we're going to put it on our pastry. Yum, that looks so good. We're just going to kind of shape this into an oval shape, kind of right down the middle and press it down. So, smells so good. Take this to your next potluck, to your next party or to your next family gathering. And you're gonna be the hit of the party. 
your broccoli braid and they're gonna ask you to bring it back every single time. And it doesn't cost it much, okay? So now what we're gonna do, make sure we got, shape it up. And take your knife and we're gonna make like little slits on the side, just like you would if you were trying to cut um, dumplings. And we're gonna go all the way around. Get to the end, we're gonna slant it like so. This way. Okay. Play with this like you have some play-doh you know don't be intimidated by it okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a piece of that dough up like that and then you're gonna twist it and pull it you can twist it as many times as you want to if you can see that and just pull it in right there I'm gonna take each one of them twist Kind of make it decorative. Twist again. We're gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna move rather quickly here. There we go. So, may have some dough left over if you pull some pieces off. And even if one of them break, just take it up under and keep it rolling, girl, keep it rolling. I'm gonna pull this this way, take the bottom right here and pull it up like you pulling up a baby's diaper. <laughs> then you're just gonna start rolling again. Roll. You don't have to make be perfect about it. You really don't. Keep rolling. Okay, you can take your time. Keep it rolling. As you can see, I've got a little opening in the middle and that's okay too. Now, if you wanted to, you could take these end pieces and cover it up, but you really don't have to. I love making appetizers and for various events, baby showers and whatever. It just seemed to be so simple to do. <laughs> but I do other things too. We're going to learn how to do a whole lot of things on this channel. So, I'm just going to pull it off and make it work. Pull it down. Pinch it off and fold it under. Fold it under. You, know, you can pull it over some more. They don't have to match each other on the sides. I'm gonna twist these just a little bit more. There. Okay. Now, when we put this in the oven, we want it to come out dark, golden. Get rid of all this dough. Look at that. But it's not pretty yet. We're gonna make it pretty now. So, we're gonna take some egg, egg white over here. And beat it up slightly. Uh oh, it's kind of noisy. That's okay. It's warm already. So what we're gonna do is just take this egg white, so it can make it really pretty and golden. You want to go down the sides.
some people um, use butter for a wash. I just prefer to use an egg white, less calories. And it gets a little bit prettier with the egg white on it. If you don't have a brush, you can do this with your fingers. You don't need a brush to do it, but it's faster. This is just a little cheap brush that I got from the dollar store. Okay, I'm gonna go around the bottom here. Just like you're an artist now. We've been a baker, now we're an artist. We're doing a little bit of painting. This is gonna be absolutely gorgeous. Now, these nuts right here, the slipping almonds, just gonna take a few and place them here and there. Preheated the oven to 375. It won't take this long to cook. You're going to have to watch it. Um, some ovens cook faster than other ones, but we're going to make sure um, that we watch it. I'd say about 25 to 30 minutes, but um, everything, all the ingredients in here are already cooked. And so your dough is really cooking and just uh, turning the color that you want it to, but you want a really dark golden brown. So we're gonna put this in the oven and we'll come back to it in just a minute. So, it's in the oven. So while we're waiting uh, for the rocky braid to finish, uh, just wanna share a little bit about myself with you and what you might find uh, on this channel that will be interesting to you. So I, um, I love cooking and I gained that love for for cooking from my mom and from my sisters and from my dear home economics teacher who instilled a very special uh, love for cooking um, you know inside of me and so um, one of the things that I just really enjoy uh, is being in my kitchen and I'm inviting you to come in so we can uh, do some of the things that I have been learning to do for over 50 years now I love gardening and I love canning, preserving, freezing, fermenting, dehydrating. So we're just gonna learn how to do all of those things on this channel. And I hope you will learn how to love cooking as much as I do. I think our broccoli braid is ready. So we're always going to practice safety and it's really hot trying to um, get a pizza stone out. So you need to be, uh, have your hands really covered. Oh wow, look at this, it's so pretty. Yes, look at that. Oh my goodness. It is gorgeous. So gorgeous. Take a good look. I'm gonna put it down right here. This is hot, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And your broccoli braid will be the star of the table wherever you take it, whether it's at home or somewhere else. I always like to cut this broccoli braid with a uh, pizza cutter. And then I also have a pie. Uh, you can use a spatula or whatever you wanna do, but I've got my pie spatula here. But we're gonna cut it and taste a little bit of it, okay? And when you are serving it, you wanna cut it in thin slices because you want it to kinda, um, you know, everybody to get a piece of it and to, for it to spray it. So we're just gonna cut a little piece off the end down here. And then we're gonna go in this direction. There. Try a little piece here. Look at that. It's hot too. Very, very, very hot. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. So good, so good. 
you gotta try this recipe. I hope you enjoy uh, making this broccoli braid and eating it as much as I have. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And welcome to Sadie's Kitchen.